In this lesson, I will update the Lesson 3 graph to read multiple input files and to make the graph more resilient, more able to handle variations in the input data. And I'll capture all the records I choose not to write to the database into a separate file. Along the way, I'll introduce the use of Clover's scripting language, CTL. I'll start by making a copy of my Lesson 3 graph and calling it Lesson 4. I have more than one input file I'd like to process. I'll import a second input file of transactions into my data in directory. And I will modify the Universal Reader Component configuration to read both files. I could explicitly select both files, but instead I'll make the configuration a bit more generic and use a wildcard. Now the graph will process any input file that starts with the string transactions and ends with an extension CSV. I will save and run and see I have an error. The console will give me a good sense of what the problem is but let me also turn on debug mode and run again to get some additional insight. Every Clover Edge can be configured to enable debug. I can right click here to enable debug on this edge. I can do that on each edge individually, or I can right click in the graph background and enable debug on all edges at once. This will allow me to look at the data as it exists at any point along the graph. I'll run again to capture some edge debug data. Debug information can be viewed by right-clicking an edge and selecting Inspect Data. I'll move the Data Inspector tab to a larger panel. Data Inspector shows the data as it exists at this point in the graph. I can sort by any column. I can filter the data being inspected. A click on the component names here gives me a visual cue as to the location in the graph I am inspecting. Viewing this data reminds me that one of my input sources is using a legacy system that placed a dash in some account numbers. The error console is indicating that I've encountered an account number with a dash in it and that Clover threw an error when trying to convert that string to a number as required by my database. Removing the dash is all I need to do to create a valid account number, so I need to update my graph to detect and correct this condition. There are many ways I can solve this problem. I could add a new reformat component to the graph and configure it to clean up account numbers. Another solution would be to update the reformat component that I already have in my graph so that it cleans up the account numbers. Recall what this reformat component is doing. In Lesson 3, I added this component to map fields from my input data file to my output data table. It changes the field names, field order, and in the case of the account number, I changed the data type from string to long. Recall also that I did this using the graphical transform property editor. What I need to do now is a bit more complicated. Rather than just converting the account number from a string to a number, I need to examine the input account number string, and if it contains a dash, I need to remove that dash before I convert it to a number. This is not so easily done with a drag and drop graphical editor. In fact, there are many operations one might want to do to transform data that are not best implemented with such a graphical interface. This is where Clover ETL's built-in scripting language called CTL or Clover Transformation Language is valuable. The Source tab on the Transformation Editor shows the CTL representation of my current transform. I can see the same mapping defined by the Drag and Drop Editor expressed in CTL. Here I map the field from input port 0 called Time to a field on output port 0 called Trans Time. Here I took the string field on input port 0 called account number 
converted it into a long, and wrote it to a field on output port 0 called account ID. In the CTL source view, I can add much more complex logic to this transformation. I'll paste some CTL code that I have already written. At first glance, this might seem intimidating, and there may be simpler ways to remove a dash, but this approach introduces a number of useful functions. I'll explain what it does. I have a comment that explains what this block of code will do. First, I create a new local variable called account number and have it hold the current value of the incoming account number string. Then, I use an if statement to check if this incoming account number string contains a dash. If it does, then I create another local variable called dash pause and set it to the position in the string where the dash is. Then, I use some string functions to create a new string without the dash. I get the left part of the string all the way up to the dash, and I concatenate it with the part of the string that is to the right of the dash. Finally, I convert my local string variable account number to a long and assign it to the field on output port 0 called account ID. My local variable will either be the original input string if there was no dash, or a newly built string with the dash removed. I also need to comment out or remove the original assignment. Note, now that I've introduced this complex bit of logic in CTL code, I can no longer view the transformation graphically. If I click on the Transformation tab, the graphical editor cannot elegantly or adequately display this new logic. I can save and run, and I see that I have fixed all the records with dashes and successfully written all records to the database. As a final step in this lesson, I want to add some logging to capture the records that I chose not to write to the database. Recall that this filter component removed all transactions of type A. Rather than simply discarding those records, I'll keep track of them by writing them to a separate file. The filter component is configured to write accepted records to its output port 0. It is also capable of writing all rejected records to its output port 1. I'll add a universal data writer component to my graph. Configure it to write data to a file in my project's data out directory called rejectedtransactions.csv. Now I'll connect output port 1 of the filter component to this universal writer. Clover ETL automatically assigns the correct metadata to this edge. I'll turn debug on this edge and run again. I can see the graph ran successfully and that seven records were written to the output file. I'll close the data inspector window from my previous run and launch a new data inspector to confirm these are all records with type A. And of course, I can see that I now have a rejected transactions CSV file in my data out directory. So, to recap lesson 4, I made a copy of the graph we created in lesson 3, modified the graph to handle multiple input files, used the data inspector to help debug, added CTL code to clean up legacy account numbers, and added logic to capture rejected records to a separate file.